part two of the granulating video. Last time I talked about the type of paint that I used, which was Daniel Smith Primatech. And this is a little set that contains six tubes. And I used about three of these colors. You can learn more about these colors from the last video when I mixed the colors that I used in the painting that I'm going to show you today. Quick, quick summary on the pros and cons. Very granulating. These are very granulating paints, which means that the pigments are literally heavy. It's like painting with sand or mud. It's like wherever you put the paint, it just kind of settles there. And um, they're also very expensive. This little tiny set is $70. This is a lot of money for what it is. And I find that you need a lot of paint for it to really show up. And these colors tend to be rather neutral. They're not super bright. So they're not as versatile for mixing either. Paper I'm going to use, the Montbal. This is cellulose paper. It's not as fine quality as cotton paper. This is cellulose. But I find that for cellulose paper, it works better than average. So if you want a cheap paper that's going to work well, this is a nice one. I have recently started a Coffee KOFI account, which allows viewers to donate and help support my channel so I can keep making videos. And every person for the month of the rest of October and November, you're going to get this cute little card featuring a painting I did of cornbread. This is the original painting. Oh yeah. And uh, everyone can actually get this recipe for free on my website, link below. And uh, let's get started on painting. Here we go. I'm really happy with these colors now that I've seen them all dry. Colors do change a lot uh, when they dry. So here we go, we're going to start the picture. I drew this last night. I did a pencil drawing and then I drew over it in ink and we are starting. I will talk more about my drawing process, I think in another video. So I can take a couple of different approaches. I could paint each leaf and let it dry individually but I think I'm just going to start with a big wash of green a little bit faster a little bit looser way to go and I'm going to make it a little bit lighter wherever I see the light hitting from the left so I'm just going to start on this guy actually you know what I'm going to start from left to right and then I don't have to worry about my hand touching anything wet this is a technique that I teach all my beginning students pretty early on. This is wet into wet technique. You get the whole object wet with the local color, the color of the object, and then you remove some of the paint wherever the light is hitting the object to make it look a little bit lighter. And then you add a little bit more paint to make it look like it's more in the shadow. And this particular green is unusual in that it has those little flecks of dark brownish color. So normally I would do a second layer to add the shadows, but because it has that sort of weird dark color to it, I'm just doing the whole thing with just the green. I don't need to use that second dark color to create the shadow. So that's kind of a cool advantage to this paint. So you can see I'm lifting the light areas. I'm dipping the brush in water and then I'm drying it out on my a towel over here on the upper right hand corner and I'm able to vary how light and how dark each leaf is. The light is coming from the left. The lower right hand area is the darkest part so I'm leaving that part darker and here I'm putting in a little bit of yellow. I dipped my brush in my yellow paint and I'm making those areas, those highlighted areas, a little bit warmer and brighter so it looks like that light is hitting it. So for the second one, I'm going to speed it up and doing the same technique. And one thing I love about this paper is that it seems to stay wet for a long time, which is unusual for cellulose papers. So while I'm filling this in, I can also go and and touch up the first artichoke from time to time. Here I go, just adding a little bit more darkness to it. 
I let the paint set a little bit and I'm adding more. And with this very granulating paint, it, the paint stays where you put it. When you use staining colors, they tend to creep along and change. Uh, when you turn your head, suddenly your picture will look different. Whereas I find that happens much less with these very heavy pigments. You put them down and then they just stay there. So here I am lifting up again and uh, adding a little bit of that yellow for those highlights to warm it up. And I'm only going to show these two for this green stage. I've moved my palette so that I don't have to cross over. You can see how dark it really gets. So here I've done all of the artichokes. But here I am, I'm going in with the purple. That's what I'm doing. So I'm doing the base of each leaf. So where the leaf is attached to the stem, which is kind of the upper right hand corner for this particular one. So I lay down, I lay down the purple and then I dip my brush in water and then I'm able to spread that purple around. And sometimes you can get a harsh line if you're not careful, but because once again, this is granulating paint, it doesn't creep ahead of where you want it to go. And uh, it's, it's pretty forgiving. I think also because these leaves are so dark, you are less likely to notice where that wet area ends. So this is a really good project for this particular variety of paint. So I'm going to do three of these artichokes that you see what this whole process looks like. This is, this is a tricky process to do, but like I said, it's, I think it's easier with this particular variety of paint. I get a lot of people asking, what is granulating paint good for? Here's this, this project is a good example. So I'm lifting and, and smoothing it out and adding a little bit of water and creating those, those subtle soft gradations between the purple section and the leaf. Now this third artichoke on the right, the stem is facing us. So we're really going to see a lot of that purple. That, that whole right side is going to be rather purplish because it is an original artichoke and I, I like how that looks. And it also creates that sense of shadow, which is nice. It's just a good coincidence. So you can see how I can soften out those purple areas just with a wet brush. You can also use the cloth to lighten up areas as well. And we'll dance back and forth. You can see that hard line, which I can soften with just a little bit of water. And there it is. So that's my initial painting. And if you look here, you can see the finished version of this painting. Uh, I added a Mars yellow background and shadows with hematite violet. I chose these colors because I felt like the green and the purple were dark and sort of neutral enough that they needed to be perked up a little bit. So the warm color of the yellow complements the purple in the artichokes. And uh, the hematite violet just kind of harmonizes with the violet in the artichokes. One cool thing about this purple is that it is made from ground amethyst. So when you put this painting in the sunshine, it actually sparkles. I do like how this green kind of glows as well. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more of my projects, I have a Facebook group called Ela's Watercolor Group. I've enjoyed hanging out with you and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Yeah. Yeah.